Imagine, you're in a quiet city with no roaring engines and no pollution. Wherever you live, you have peace and quiet. Nature is able to bloom everywhere. You can drive to Polish coast and back just after charging your car from a socket overnight or after a short stay in the sun. You can feel a little bit like in the 80s and be able to fix your personal car by yourself at home. It would be great, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, our reality is a bit different. How many of you drive a car every day? We are constantly using petrol or gas, which is absolutely not eco-friendly and, let's face it, not really cheap to use. What do we need to change the status quo? We need courage. Courage to step out of your comfort zone and do something more than just letting things happen. I'm sure that in your life there was more than one situation when you thought, wow, it would be so great to do this, but all you actually did was just thinking, didn't you? We are members of Lot Solar team, a group of students changing the status quo. But how did it happen, actually? Our friend, Lucas, went to Netherlands for studies. And he's the living proof that traveling broadens our mind. He, he came back with an idea of the solar project. Absolutely uncommon here in Poland, but there in Netherlands, actually really popular. And at first, he had exactly the same thought as we mentioned at the beginning. Wow, it would be great to do that. But what is the difference? He did it. He found the team and launched the project. From your own experience, you probably know that Poland is such a crazy country to be sure that this kind of project has absolutely no chance for success. But at the same time, it must be successful. Why? Well, our national system is crazy in this rather negative meaning, completely unwilling and unprepared for such students' actions. But at the same time, Polish people, especially the young ones, are crazy in this positive meaning, to believe that everything is possible. Lucas undoubtedly wanted to achieve something remarkable. But still, believe me, the effect absolutely exceeded his expectations. First members of Lot Solar team found that there is absolutely nothing better than to learn from the best. They went again to Netherlands to visit University of Twente, and at the same time, one of the best, the most experienced solar team in the world. Thanks to this visit, our enthusiasm was even bigger, but at the same time, we realized that we need much more resources than we supposed. Solar Team Fanta has been building solar-powered cars for 20 years now. Their university schedules their budget as for any other department. They don't think about money. They are simply supposed to build the best solar car in the world. Well, our situation was a bit different. Maybe we were not supposed to build the best solar car in the world, but at the same time, we had no money for that. What is more, we had actually not enough knowledge and no support. At first, almost nobody believed that we can achieve anything in this field. However, we are the lucky ones. Outstanding idea and eager enthusiasm was enough to get the grant of Ministry of Higher Education. At that moment, we thought it was everything that we need and we must simply design and build solar power vehicle. Obviously, it will occur to be much more complicated. So far, there are over 80 people who are somehow connected with our team, and 20 of them who went through the toughest stage represented us during Bridgestone World Solar Challenge 2015 in Australia. By the time of Australian race, we developed also our organizational system. The team is, div is divided into five different departments, mechanical, electrical, financing and cooperation development, 
marketing, and accounting. This can show you that this is much more than just tinkering. But let's move to the star of tonight, solar-powered vehicle. We have the project, and we have to build it somehow. Sounds easy, right? And it does. All what you need is about 1,440 working hours of at least four people. 50, km 50 meters of cable, five kilograms of speckle, 100 square meters of carbon fiber, 1.5 liters of lacquer, 25 kilograms of resin, 80 kilograms of batteries, six square meters of solar panels, and let's say about 100 sleepless nights for the team. So, how to get down to it? You need to start with the body. Our one was made of carbon fiber by one of our co-partners' companies. What is important, and I think quite interesting, nobody has been preparing such a big mold as we needed before, and that is why we asked for help. Our body consisted of two elements, upper here and lower. And thanks to it, the installation of every element was much easier. Our first actual work was mounting the construction and supporting the body. Then we had to get down to suspension, without dampers yet, but with steering and brakes on the rear axle. At the same time, our electrical team was working on the first computer-based steering system. And such a construction enabled us to perform first driving tests. That was 3rd of July, when our, car was <laughs> when our car drove for the first time. Both parts of the body were not even glued together at this moment, and it also appeared that our acceleration pedal was not connected. So, imagine. You were in the car, you were supposed to drive it somehow, but the only one way to modify the speed is to put something, some number in the computer. Uh, but yeah, you have absolutely no physical control of speed. Yeah, that was a really strange feeling, and this re test, re test results were absolutely not satisfying, so we simply got back to work. We had to weld our safety cage, uh, fit it precisely in the body, then fit our dashboards and seat and print, for example, our lamp housing. Yeah, exactly, print. I don't know if you know this technique, but for us, 3D printing was really, really useful du during this project, and we used it much more uh, than once. After all that, we had still a huge quantity of small items to install, uh, to install inside of our body uh, just before uh, joining uh, both parts of the body together. When it was finally done, we had some time for stiffering uh, fin doors, and finally our car went to the painter. The electric and electronic parts were not any easier. In the meantime, our vehicle was equipped with batteries and inverters. And after the painting, the crown jewel, solar panels, came into play. We've, of course, tested all our systems in the sun to make the proper connections between solar panels with inverters and converters. I bet you're not able to mention all the parts of our vehicle right now. But what's even more impressive, we've done the whole building part within two months only. When our car was basically ready, we wanted to give it an honest test. Driving around our campus didn't seem like enough for a car that was supposed to drive through the whole Australian continent. We were brave enough to take our baby on a real road and drove from Wood to Wenchitza. Well, the car was fine, but the driver, well, when he got out completely wet, we knew we had to do something with ventilation system before challenging Australian desert. Looking at performance data, 
We've also decided to change our engines to Japanese ones. With them, we had a better chance for success. And we were doing this just before the shipping. Seems like hard work in a rush? Well, it was indeed, but nothing can beat the feeling when you know you achieved something remarkable. The night before the premiere of our car, the whole team spent in a garage working. The sleepless night, tousled hair, grease on fingers and different socks on feet are nothing in comparison with the moment when we could proudly remove the red cloth covering our car in front of all the sponsors, all the people that believed in us in times where we had really nothing to show them. But now, we definitely have it. How do you think? What is the maximum speed? What is the range? And what is the weight of this car? So after two months of garage working, we have 420 kilograms vehicle. With homologation prepared for transport of two people in comfortable seats covered with anti-moisture material, with the range up to 1,500 kilometers. It means that you can go to Berlin for shopping, put all your dresses and stuff to the spacious trunk, and come back home speeding 120 kilometers per hour. Because, yeah, that is the maximum speed of our vehicle. Yes, and what's even more impressive, uh, well, we were never stopped by the police. Uh, when they see us on the road, they see just like the license plate with open wide eyes, but it's okay for them, so... They don't control us at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but speaking of speeding, how does it actually work? Well, the sun emits energy that reaches the Earth. So-called sunlight is a stream of little particles that we call photons. Now, who had the photoelectric effect at school? Well, everybody had it, nobody will admit it, but don't worry, we won't test you. Well, when the photon hits the surface of solar panel, it extracts an electron from the semiconductor, creating a pair of electron and a hole. We say that electrons are negative, but the holes? Well, they are neutral, but combining with electrons, they create a potential difference and electricity flow that goes to inverter. This device changes direct current into alternating current, like the one in our sockets. Then, uh, depending on the state of vehicle, if it's moving or if it is stopped, the energy can be sent directly to motors or to battery. Logically, when we are driving, we tend to use instantly energy gathered by solar panels, so we are sending it to motors, and if we are stopped, we want to store it in battery for the later use. What does it mean to us, actually? It means that the sunny day is not necessary to drive the solar-powered vehicles the vehicle to the work or to work or school. Our car is ready to use, even if it's cloudy, because the energy is accumulated in the battery. And these are the basics of photo photo photovoltaics that we teach children taking part in the classes prepared in cooperation with Lotz University for Children. That is really the great satisfaction to be able to build the new generation of our poles who are brave enough to search for creative and innovative solutions. That is something incredible when we can see children's old faces, when they can see that, if you want, you can make your dreams come true. All you need is a good plan, courage, a, consist a consistency in actions. Well, during this project, we were in trouble more than once. We got a solid lesson of humility, but now, we can say that our dreams came true. We've driven across Australian continent over 3,000 kilometers without any problems. Well, the flat tire was our biggest one. We came across the finish line as the sixth in our category, being the best team among debutants. We also won the safety award, meaning that our car was the safest among all participants. Can you imagine? We, 
the Polish team are the best in something in the world. Wow, it's even better when someone says it out loud. <laughs> but this was not enough for us. We had the courage to take on a new challenge, improve our car, and take partially new team to extreme conditions in South Africa. And we do not regret this decision. Thanks to the second race, we know that our car is able to drive even in really extreme conditions, like strong wind and mountains. We did not only have a good score. We've driven over 2,800 kilometers. We did not only start a completely new class of cars during Social Solar Challenge, but we've also proved that we are quite good in marketing. We won the communication award for the best media team. But guys, there is one more aspect of solar challenges. Do you know that in this kind of races, there is no prize but the title and satisfaction? Because solar challenge is not about winning. It's about creating new solutions, improving technology, and making the world a better, safer place. Everybody perceives environment protection differently. But whatever you think, you cannot deny sunny December or snowy March that we have now in Europe. We are responsible for the, for the Earth, the home of future generations. Our idea, conducted non-profit by us and other solar teams, proves that it is possible not only to get rid of engines, but also to save electrical energy using solar power. If solar vehicles are cheaper, less complicated, and moreover ecological, why don't we use it on a daily basis? Is it really about this adorable engine throbbing? We will leave you with this, with this question tonight. Thank you very much for Thank your you. attention.